Brian Mudd Show is on News Radio 610 WIOD. Staying on the uh, technology side here, Amazon. I mean, the service itself has evolved a lot over the years. I mean, and not a whole lot that's different about the the base premise at this point over 20 years ago. But the one thing that has been consistent re- regardless as part of this experience concerns about fake reviews. I mean, that's certainly not new either. But it, it seems like we always talk about, hey, there are a bunch of fake reviews and then nothing really ever improves. And, uh, well, now we're hearing about millions, millions of, of fakes that are still getting through on Amazon and, and other services for that matter. But obviously, Amazon is the most prolific. And here to talk about this and how not to become a victim of spam reviews, Steve Pope, myamazonguy.com is his website, myamazonguy.com. All right, Steve, so is this a case with, with all the fake reviews to where every time uh, you, you have – people who catch on to how to filter out some of these spammers, they're already on to the next way to get around it? it it's a complex situation, and thanks for having me on today. Um, if, if you're a consumer going on Amazon and you're trying to figure out, like, hey, can I trust this item? Should I buy this? A lot of buyer decisions are being made in, like, 20, 30 seconds, right? You look at the main image of the product. You look at the price, and you're hitting that add to, add to cart button, and you're getting that thing shipped to you, and if two-day prime is not fast enough, you're getting two-hour prime, prime now, right? So the consumer journey has been really, uh, you know, it's really nice, right? It's super nice. And so, like, the reason the conversion rates are higher on Amazon, like 15%, 20% conversion rate versus, like, buying something off a website at 1% to 3% conversion is because the consumer has learned to trust Amazon. So when all these fake reviews have become such a problem and they're, they're hitting the news, consumers are starting to ask some questions. You take a look at, you know, those those reviews. Are there some real tells about things that are fakes? I mean, we've had some in years gone by, but it, it does seem like the level of sophistication has improved. I, I think there's two ways a consumer can tell if, if the reviews are legitimate. And, and by the way, if you're looking at a 10,000 review product on Amazon, that doesn't necessarily mean just because there's lots of reviews that they're fake. An item that sells thousands of units, of course, is going to produce thousands of reviews. But here's probably two ways I would suggest consumers can keep, uh, you know, can protect themselves, if you will. The first is if you look at the ratio of five to one star reviews, if more than 70% of the reviews are four and five stars, but there's this giant 31 star review, that's a, that's a telltale sign, right? Like, you know that they're hiding the one star reviews by trying to spam it with lots of five star reviews. Now, if, if the listing has less than, five or six percent one star reviews you're probably a lot better off so i think that's the first telltale the second thing is and 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 we'll talk a little bit about like how these get generated too and like why this is happening but but the second telltale is if you see an item's reviews that make zero sense they don't apply <laughs> to that particular product yeah. it could be th- that the seller of this item has combined their listing with another former discontinued product and basically is taking advantage of past reviews for an unrelated item and merged them together. This is probably the, actually the most common problem right now. And, and that's what consumers need to be aware of. So if you go down and scroll down and look at some of those reviews and you're like, Oh man, this is talking about a kitchen knife, but I'm buying a radio. That's, <laughs> that's definitely a fake review situation. How much is the marketplace complicated on Amazon by how many third parties you have selling into it that aren't necessarily, you know, part of Amazon itself? That definitely adds a lot of complexity. And so I I run an agency called My Amazon Guy. I have more than 200 brands that we help sell on the platform. And, And the reason I exist is because Amazon's not a selling platform. It's a buying platform for the consumer. Amazon only cares about the consumer experience. And that's the reason why they're starting to pay attention to this, because what happened, Wild Wild West, all these sellers trying to compete with each other, and and I'll go ahead and say it out loud, the Chinese are using more tactics than, you know, than, than are ethical in some instances, and they'll do anything to put food on the table. And so the marketplace has had China come direct to consumer for the first time. That's the number one driver of the situation. But the regular mom and pop sellers or even the corporate U.S. entities are also doing some, you know, things that are against the white hat tactics as well. I'm going to give you one example, Um, product inserts. So 
as a consumer, many of your listeners listening right now, you've, you've had that product insert come with your product, and they say, hey, we'll give you a free product, or hey, we'll give you a $20 gift card if you leave a five-star review on Amazon. Well, here's the thing. Amazon prohibits incentivized reviews, and it's been prohibited in writing for about four or five years now. And so if you get a product insert like that as a consumer, if you report them, they will get in trouble big time with Amazon. So nobody can incentivize reviews. You can't even suggest leaving a review on a listing or Amazon will crack down on it. Amazon has also taken away seller's privileges from digitally marketing their consumers. Like you can't even send yeah. an email that's customized to a consumer anymore because of this problem. It's directly well, Steve, related. That I mean, that is really helpful information. I appreciate you taking the time to share it. Steve Pope and his website, myamazonguy.com.